Hello everyone, my name is Silent Clone and welcome to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. And today what I'm going to be doing is actually a remake of a video that I did not too long ago where I did a creation tips video for your character because I found when I started this game I knew very little about it and no one really kind of taught me how to make a character and how leveling up works and what each skill and everything did with the characters. So I wanted to go ahead and make a video for those of you that are in the same position and just want to learn a little bit more about the game to enjoy it as much as I do and be able to play through it and understand it. So but before I get started, I do want to ask you all a question. Which side do you choose? Light side or dark side? Feel free to comment below as to which side you're aligned to. I'd certainly love to hear your reasonings behind choosing that side as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So by hitting New Game here, we are prompted at a character generation screen where we'll choose our class. It can either be male or female in this case. And the classes are going to be the same throughout it. There is Scoundrel, Scout, and Soldier. So just to kind of think of all these, a quick breakdown of all of them. The Scoundrel, kind of like a Han Solo character. Almost a smuggler, just kind of used to hiding in the shadows, doing things that might get you into a bit of trouble, but being able to talk your way out of it as needed as well. The scoundrels in this class always will have a passive skill that's part of their feed stream. We'll get into feeds a little later where they'll get a plus two to defense because they're always getting into a little bit of trouble and they need a little help with it as well. So if you're wanting to be a smooth talker, this will be the class for you. Next up then is our scout. Are you good with technology? You're used to kind of surviving in the outer rim of space and fending for yourself? This will be the character for you. You'll primarily be focused on repair, computer use, the whole nine yards and everything as well, and kind of taking after yourself. So if you kind of want to be that Anakin Skywalker from Tatooine, but not as whiny when you get older, this will be the class for you. Finally, we have a soldier. You actually want to be a competent stormtrooper? This is the class for you. You're going to excel in combat. Everyone's going to rival you. They're going to be scared. So while you're making your character, just kind of think of what class might suit you best. For me, I personally like the gameplay of the Scoundrel, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that class. So now we're in character generation now that we've had a class selection. Now there are two options. Make a quick character and have the computer generate one for you randomly. But where's the fun in that? So we're going to do custom character right away asks for a portrait so this will be how your character looks there are a bunch of different stock profiles so go ahead and pick which one you feel you like the most personally I stick with this one so I'm gonna go hit OK go on to our next section which is our attributes so our attributes kinda deal with how things are gonna work how successful are we gonna be with certain actions and there are six different attributes first one being our strength pretty simple. How hard do you hit? This is your likelihood of being effective with melee weapons such as swords or lightsabers even. So this is your chance to hit like I just said. It also determines how hard you're going to hit an enemy as well and will calculate your damage there as well. Next up is your dexterity. This is your reflexes or your agility. This also will be very helpful if you're wanting to stay back and use blaster rifles or blaster pistols or throw grenades. This also plays a fact into how difficult are you to hit. High defense skill means you're a little more difficult to hit in everything. It also increases your defense rating, which will determine how much damage you take after being struck in combat. Third is our constitution. This is your health. This will determine how much health you gain at each level and how much health you'll start with. So a lot of points in this early on and throughout the game will increase your health drastically. If you're wanting to be that all-out combat person and charging into battle, you're going to want a lot of points into this just because you're going to take a lot of damage necessarily and you want to be able to withstand that damage. Next up is our intelligence. Simply put, how smart are you? Are you smarter than a fifth grader? You no, no. So, these intelligence is going to add modifiers to certain skills as well. Also, it's going to give you more points to put into skills which we'll be getting into in a little bit. So if you want to be a jack of all trades and you want to be able to put a lot of points in different skills, put more points into your intelligence. Next up is wisdom and in my last video I didn't really touch on this skill because I didn't really understand it in particular. So what this does, it's very similar to the 
your constitution and the fact that it increases the amount of force points that you have available. Sorry guys, spoilers, it's a Star Wars game, you get to use force powers. But the more force points you have, the more often you can use these powers. Until you run out and having to recharge, and recharging those in combat is much slower. This also plays a factor into how likely is an enemy going to resist your force power. So for example, if you're using a force push technique, your wisdom's not high enough, you might try the force push, but they won't go anywhere. You'll just kind of stand there and they're going to look at you like, well, why, why are you putting your hand out like that? That, that? That's just stupid. So could you imagine Vader being there on the Death Star picking up a soldier? I find your lack of faith disturbing. But while he does that motion, if his willpower is not high enough, he's not going to pick that guy up off the ground. And that would just be quite embarrassing. You're going to feel like an idiot and I wouldn't want to face Vader if that happened as well. You certainly don't want to laugh at him. He's got a lightsaber. That's scary. And then finally, we have our charisma. Ability to take the lead, as the game says here. Helps modify some certain force powers as well. But it also is a very big part of if you're wanting to be a good talker as well. So for a scoundrel like myself, this game, this will be something I want to put a lot of points into because it's going to add bonuses to anything that requires me to talk. So... Right away, we start off with 30 points that we have to distribute, and if you've noticed while I've been talking that there's a modifier that's right here, and it's showing as a negative number. What that means is that every time you do an action, you're going to be set back. Knights of the Old Republic is very similar to Dungeons & Dragons in the fact that everything you do, the game rolls a d20 for you to determine the outcome and how successful the action is going to be in the case of combat, how much damage are you going to do? So with a negative modifier, that's setting us back. So say I roll a 10 success for combat. With a negative modifier, that now becomes a 9, which means now my opponent in their dexterity roll has a greater chance of succeeding. That's greater than 50%, so I might not hit my opponent. And that's going to make combat last quite a bit longer. So what I recommend doing and what I do is I put two points right away into strength. And as you see, that modifier has just become neutral. So that 10 roll for my combat check is a 10. And it's going to stay a 10. So I'm going to do that for every single one of my points here. So with our modifier equal, I then recommend putting in points in the attributes that you feel are going to work best for your character. In my case here, what I'm going to do, I really want a nice smooth talker, so I'm going to put four points in charisma. I want to be able to do some damage in combat, but I also don't want to get hit all too much. I want to have a good amount of health points. Fairly intelligent, fairly wise as well. I don't think I'm going to be relying too much on force powers. But don't worry, these attributes aren't set in stone. If you want to increase one, you certainly can. There are multiple points throughout the game while you level up and gain experience where you'll be able to increase these attributes as well. So pick what you feel is going to be best. You don't necessarily have to move it off a of 10 if you feel it's not a good skill for you. But for example, if you're going to be a soldier, I recommend putting in as many points as you can in strength and constitution, greater combat success and greater combat damage, a lot of health. So once you're all done there, you go ahead and hit OK. We'll go on to our next part, which is our skills. So these skills come in two different parts, and these are cross-class skills. So something that is not relevant to the class that you selected at the beginning of the game, and class skills, something that's relevant to your class that you're playing as. Class skills, when you level up on creation here, you can level them up to a max of four, while with cross-class, just to a max of two. And with each skill, the class skills cost one point to level up, while the cross class counts as two points to level up. So with each of these skills are things you can do within the environment itself once we get into gameplay. So for computer use, now there's computers throughout the game that you can access through splicing to it, and we'll use things called computer spikes. And the more points you have in this, fewer spikes so you use and this the amount of spikes needed to do certain actions such as disable automatic turrets outside will be decreased by one for every four points you have in this skill so say for example i have no points in computer use but i can still splice into a computer it might cost five 
spikes to be able to disable the turrets outside. But if I have four points in computer use, it'll be decreased by one, so it'll be four spikes. Next up is our demolitions. This is your ability to set, arm, and disarm and recover mines. Mines are going to be scattered throughout there. It is a world where the stuff goes boom. So this will be your ability to pick those up and use those to your advantage as well. The more points you have, the more successful you'll be able to pick up more difficult bombs and mines. So the last thing you want is to be trying to pick up a very deadly fragmentation mine and have it go boom right in your face. It's not going to be the start of a good day. Stealth. This will give you the ability to access stealth mode if you have an item that will allow you to do so, such as a stealth field generator. In stealth, you can't be seen by enemies if you're not in their line of sight. And if you're in their line of sight, they will then have to check their awareness skill, which we'll get into next, to be able to detect you. While in stealth mode, only one character can be in stealth at a time. That being said, while you're doing stealth, you can open doors, repair droids, go into lockers and look through things, access computers, but the instant you enter combat, stealth mode is deactivated and you're now in combat. Next up is awareness. Kind of like what I just mentioned, it's the ability to see invisible units such as other characters or even mines as well. It's always going to be a passive skill and the greater your awareness, the more likely you are to see these invisible objects right away. Next up is Persuade. Kind of a simple little skill. Something that allows you to talk to people and convince them to do things they might not necessarily do. So for example, in dot, when you're talking with someone, there might be another dialogue option to reveal where the hidden bad guy base is. Or to convince a guard to step away from his post while you sneak inside and blow up their base. The more points you have in that, the more success you will have in doing any of those options. Repair. There'll be many disabled mechanical devices. It's the Star Wars universe. Broken droids lay rampant everywhere. And to repair these, you'll use repair parts, much like computers use computer spikes. And much like computers, the amount of parts needed to repair, say, a droid is decreased by one for every four points that you have in this skill. Security. It's the ability to pick open lock boxes, lockers, or even doors. And if you have one point in this, it'll be a default option for anything when you come up to, say, a locked door. Otherwise, you don't have the ability to unlock the door. You'll just have to bash it open with your weapon, which could take forever with how the combat works. Finally is our Treat Injury. Basically, this is your ability to heal yourself after taking combat damage with a med pack. Med packs you'll find throughout the, the world. Just how effective are those going to work with us? So what I recommend doing is kind of getting a little mix and again think of the kind of character you want to have if you want a smooth talker max out your persuade right away use all four of those points into that if that's a class skill for you or max it to two if it's a cross class skill for me i'm going to go here with awareness two points in treat injury i plan on probably taking a little bit of combat damage right away at the beginning i want to be able to heal myself when i can i'm going to put in some points here in demolition to pick things up and put some final points here in security to be able to open doors, to be more successful with that. All right, then our final thing that we have is our feats. Now each class has their own set of feats that they will be granted right away. So here I have armor proficiency, I can use light armor, I have a chance to critical strike in my melee rolls, I could take a focused sniper shot, I have proficiency in blaster and melee weapons, I get a sneak attack and then the scoundrel's luck, which is that extra plus to defense like I was talking about earlier. So you get passive ones that you get right away, but you also have one feat that you can add upon character creation, and much like skills and attributes, as you level up, you get an opportunity to increase these feats and add more feats as you level up. So don't worry, it's not one time, you got to pick wisely. So there's quite a few of them. I'm not going to go into super detail with them because there are just so many. I'm only going to touch on a few of them, and like the ones that I personally really like and would recommend maxing out. The first one, since I'm down here at the bottom, is going to be Toughness. This adds vitality points as you level up as well, so it'll give you more health. So even if you don't have a lot of points in the Constitution, this is really good for you. But even if you do have a lot of points in Constitution, this is great. You could pick it up at any point in time, and it's going to retroactively give you those points as well. 
Another one I recommend is our Flurry Strike. That'll give you an extra melee attack during the turn, causing you to do more damage at the cost of you're going to have negative penalty for a little while and suffer a 4 to defense. You're going to lose your defense rating for a little bit for 3 seconds. But it's definitely worth it to get that extra attack in there, especially if you're going for combat superiority. Probably one of the best ones for combat as well. But the first one I often recommend for maxing out right away as, you, as soon as you can is two-weapon fighting. The ability to wield two weapons in this game is phenomenally strong. Because you can have weapons that you can upgrade as well, such as lightsabers that have two ports to be able to upgrade the weapons to do more damage and have special feats. Whereas if you did one big two-handed weapon, you might have just two ports for it. So if you were wielding Darth Maul's lightsaber, you only have two ports to be able to upgrade. Whereas if you dual wield, kind of like any other Jedi, or when Anakin fights Dooku right away, you've got two of them, two crystals, in each saber, more power. More power is good, it means more success in combat. So right away, go through read through all of these it all depends on what you want to do they can boost your attributes they can boost some of your skills as well or help with your combat so in this case i like to typically start with toughness right away especially in the early game it could just take one bad roll of the dice and you lose all your health in one swing so we'll go ahead and hit okay then get to pick a name computer will generate a name for you randomly you can choose to stick with it or if you've got your own name that you want to go by you certainly can I like to use the name Aswad Dick Whistle for my name. It's a funny little name. makes me giggle to myself. I hope you guys are giggling at home. It's kind of funny, and I try to make my character say the name as often as possible when talking to someone. So that you can get a laugh. I can just picture those characters laughing in there. After you hit OK, then you're all set to go. All you'd have to do then is hit play and start your game. You've successfully created your character. Now we get to go on and play the game and actually do the Star Warsing. So, if you guys did like this video, please hit the like button there at the bottom. Leave a comment as well if you have suggestions or any questions about anything throughout this as well that I might not have covered or if you're just a little curious about playing through it and you're, say, halfway through the game. Don't know how to do something? I'll certainly try to answer your question as best as possible. If you want to see more videos like this and possibly even more playthroughs of this and a walkthrough possibly, Hit the subscribe button. I do appreciate any and all support that you guys give me. It means you guys are finding me entertaining, and it means a lot because this is a really fun hobby to me, and I like to share my knowledge of games, especially this one and others, with you guys as well. Again, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe there at the bottom, and I will see you guys next time. And remember, save the cheerleader. Save the world. Siler Clone, signing out.